For all of human history and in the developing world today, the best way to improve the quality of life has been to raise material living standards. But when you get to a point of having enough, where everyone has enough, then there are diminishing returns to societies getting richer and richer. And if we look at rich, developed, market democracies, there is no relationship at all between average levels of income and life expectancy. A country can be twice as rich as another. The USA and Norway, for instance, are twice as rich as Israel and Greece. But it gives them no benefit in life expectancy. And not in happiness either, or measures of well-being. Some of our societies have got twice as rich in the past couple of decades, and yet we're no happier than we used to be. So we're the first generation to have got to the end of what economic growth can do for us. And all of you here today know that for other reasons, apart from our health and quality of life right now, we need to rein in economic growth. And what does matter for our health and well-being is inequality. It's a very strong and robust relationship. When we look at those rich market democracies, we find that the degree of income inequality in them is strongly predictive of levels of trust, levels of mental illness, life expectancy and infant mortality, the proportion of the population who are obese, rates of teenage births and pregnancies, rates of violence, the proportion of the population in prison, how well children score on educational tests, whether or not they drop out of high school, whether or not people take drugs. Child well-being is much worse in more unequal societies and social mobility is much lower. You can't have social mobility, equality of opportunity, when you have large inequalities of outcomes to start with. The ladder gets steeper, the rungs get further apart, so improving social mobility is going to be impossible without greater equality. So when we found that inequality was associated with that whole range of health and social problems, we knew it was pretty politically sensitive. We've not been able to talk about inequality in politics in this country for a couple of decades. So we tested it all again on the 50 US states and asked exactly the same question. Do they have more health and social problems if they're more unequal states? And we found exactly the same pattern. More problems in more unequal states. And the scale of the differences is huge. More unequal countries three, have three times the rates of mental illness. In the UK, 23% of us have had some kind of mental illness in the past 12 months, and it's less than 10% in more equal countries. Rates of violence can be 10 times higher in the more unequal states than in the more equal ones. Rates of imprisonment can be 16 times higher. The differences are enormous. And what's really important is that the impact of inequality is not only felt among the poorest in our societies or in the most deprived areas, it affects all of us. Middle class, wealthy, well-educated people are happier and healthier in a more equal society. Their children do better in school. Their life chances are better. So this isn't an issue any longer about closing the gap because we want to help people at the bottom, some kind of altruistic ideology. It's to benefit all of us. The quality of life for all of us would be better if our society were a bit more equal. Now sometimes when I go and give talks, especially in places like America, people say, but we don't want to be like Sweden. <laughs> or we don't want to be like Japan because they're all miserable over there and it's boring. Well, I say, give me a bit of that boring, please. Less violence, happier children, healthier lives. I'd, I'd settle for boring. But actually, it does turn out that in more equal countries, people are happier. So I don't think the boring really applies. 
What we should be asking ourselves instead of do we want to be like Sweden or do we want to be like Japan is do we want to live in a more equal Britain? That's the question. And the answer from the public is a resounding yes, actually. 80% of the British public think that something should be done about incomes at the top. We're slightly less generous about the poor at the bottom. But 80% of us think something should be done and that inequalities have grown too big. And encouragingly, across the political spectrum, politicians are admitting that inequality in the UK has grown too big and they're admitting that it's damaging. What they're not doing in the three main parties is telling us what they'll do about it and putting in place some concrete policies to really deal with constraining incomes at the top as well as raising incomes at the bottom. And that's what we need. Um, Johan mentioned some compelling reasons why we need to join up an agenda for greater equality with one for the environment and moving to a sustainable economy. I'll give you three more. The first is that consumerism is going to be a major roadblock for us coping with climate change. We have to stop buying things. We have to stop that treadmill. And because inequality increases status competition among people, consumerism and the drive to consume gets worse in more unequal societies. If we have to prove our status all the time, I'm afraid we do it through shopping. Bigger houses, more cars, designer handbags, consuming more and more and more, the flat screen televisions. And in more unequal societies, you can see this, people work longer hours, they get into debt more, they're much, much more driven by the need to make money because status is so much more important in the unequal societies. And the second reason why greater equality is going to be, I think, a necessary precondition for us creating more sustainable economies is because in more equal societies, people are more public-spirited. They interact with one another better, they trust each other more. And as well as seeing that at the sort of individual level, we can see that more equal societies behave in more public-spirited and altruistic ways. They do donate more in foreign aid. They score higher on the Global Peace Index. They recycle more. Even business leaders in more equal countries are more likely to think that their government should comply with environmental agreements. And more equal countries emit less carbon. And there's a third reason why we need more equality. And you'll sometimes hear people say, we need some inequality. It drives aspirations and it drives creativity. You know, we'll take some of the damage it causes because of the benefits it brings. That's a myth. It's just as much a myth as America being the land of opportunity. But it is a myth. When we look at a measure of innovation, patents granted per capita, we find that there's a statistically significant higher rate of patents per capita in more equal societies. It's not a particularly strong relationship, but it's in the exact opposite direction to what some people think it is. So we need less consumerism, we need more public spiritedness, we need more innovation to cope with climate change, and greater equality is going to be the key for us making that transition. <coughs>